Today, March 20th, 2012, EMC Greenplum drew back the curtain on Chorus, its collaborative analytic platform for data scientists. Importantly, the company announced a new open source business model for Chorus. As well, EMC acquired Pivotal Labs, a software development consultancy. Hello, everybody. This is Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org, and I'm here with my colleague, Jeff Kelly, Wikibon's big data analyst. And on the phone, we have David Floyer, CTO of Wikibon. We're going to discuss what did EMC Greenplum announce exactly? What does it mean to customers in the industry, and why does it matter? Gentlemen, thanks for joining me. Great to be here. So, Jeff, why don't Good we start with you? Thank you, David. Um, David, remote from uh, Mountain View, as always. Um, Jeff, kick it off here. What did EMC Greenplum specifically announce? Mm -hmm. uh, three things. That Chorus, uh, their, as you mentioned, their social collaborative analytic platform that they've been talking about now for about a year is going to go GA on uh, March 23rd, on Friday. Uh, second, uh, that they're going to open source Chorus uh, the second half of this year, although some details on that are still a little bit vague. And third, that they're acquiring Pivotal Labs, uh, a, a consultancy that helps uh, organizations build big data applications, um, and, and also the company that helped, uh, that worked with EMC actually to develop Chorus. Uh, so those are the three main news points that were announced. So talk a little bit more about Chorus. So where does Chorus fit? Peel the onion a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, a little bit more detail on what it is and where it fits into the whole Greenplum platform. Sure. Uh, so Greenplum's uh, Chorus uh, platform, essentially it's, uh, as, as we mentioned, a collaborative analytic platform, which means uh, it's designed for data scientists um, to manipulate and otherwise you know, do their day-to-day -day work with data uh, using the tools of their choice. Uh, and it kind of surrounds that uh, or places that in a, in a collaborative environment. So it makes it easier to connect with colleagues, um, collaborate on research, find new data sources that might be strewn about the organization here and there. Um, and essentially, it's really to embrace the collaborative nature of data scientists, which um, you know, we know from, from surveys, data scientists are among the most collaborative uh, of IT workers or, or business uh, analysts. So uh, it's essentially uh, that kind of uh, layer that surrounds the analytics uh, tools to, to enable collaboration. So Chorus is part of what Greenplum calls what, UAP, what is that, U uh, Universal uh, Analytic? Unified Analytic Platform. U Unified Analytic Platform. Mm -hmm. And so where does Chorus fit and what else is in there? Uh, UAP has essentially got three main components. Uh, it's the Greenplum Analytic Database, it's the Greenplum Hadoop Distribution, and sitting side by side, and you can kind of picture Chorus as the third component layered on top of the two, and essentially allowing you to access both uh, systems to uh, integrate the data into, into Chorus and manip otherwise manipulate it and with the Hadoop tools. Is the other Apache Hadoop or yes, it's some their, other it's distribution? Their, it's their Apache-based distribution as opposed to their MapR-based distribution. Okay, so, so the UAP does not include the, the MapR piece. That's correct. Okay. Um, and, and Pivotal Labs, uh, you mentioned they're a software consultancy, software development consultancy. Mm -hmm. uh, I know they're focused on agile, rapid development. They were sort of early proponents of that whole methodology. What, what else do you know about them? Uh, well, you know, they worked with a lot of uh, basically building web-based applications, and they've developed uh, something called Pivotal Tracker, which is their own essentially application uh, framework for agile software development. Um, so they've, they're pretty well recognized in the uh, software development industry, and as I mentioned, they were working closely with EMC on developing Chorus, and uh, over the course of that relationship, EMC came to the conclusion that Pivotal Labs could really help their clients essentially build big data applications on top of UAP, uh, hence the acquisition today. So, Jeff, let's talk a little bit about what this means, and then I want to bring David Floyer into the discussion. So, sure. Greenplum's announced, EMC Greenplum announced that it's open sourcing Chorus. So exactly what does that mean? Because you know people talk about open source. There's different gradations of of open and free, and mm -hmm. and and so clarify exactly what this is about. Well, EMC was a little bit vague on the details, but we do you know they do they have committed to open sourcing this in the second half of the year, and they talk mostly about open sourcing it in the sense of making the API as available to developers. Um, they don't envision. Uh, I'm not even quite sure if they're going to allow. Uh, developers uh, to, to fiddle with the the actual code, the platform itself, Chorus, but the idea here is to make Chorus easily available to uh, application developers so they, they can plug their applications, or I should say plug Chorus, directly into uh, their application development uh, processes. So I thought, so what's, what's vague? I thought that they had um, used the metaphor of Android uh, versus right. um, Linux, for example. Right. So Android is essentially controlled, 
by Google, mm -hmm. right? People make contributions, but they've got to go through J a Java, sort of similar type of model. Uh, right, well, got to go through now Oracle was Sun. Mm -hmm. Well, I think I think what I took away uh, from the announcement is that they're really focused on they they don't see they don't believe there's a lot of work that needs to be done on the Chorus platform. That's not kind of why it's not the Hadoop model where people need to uh, make the platform more robust. It's a lot of white space. Right. Yeah. This is they believe the platform's enterprise ready, ready to go. Hence the GA later this week. Um, the idea of the open source component is to make it easy and to attract developers uh, to build applications on top. Um, and then in terms of how much they're going to control that, you know, they, they mentioned there's going to be, there's still a work in progress of how, how tightly they're going to control or um, basically control the applications that are built on top. But, uh, you know, they have stated that they're, you know, committed to keeping this an open environment and trying to uh, make it as available to as many people as possible. Uh, David Flory, let's bring you into the conversation. Um, what's your take on all this? Well, it, for for Green Plum customers, uh, this makes the, uh, the the addition of Chorus on top of it uh, in, enhances its value. Um, essentially, it seems a, a, a better way of being able to populate the Green Plum database uh, from multiple sources and be able to uh, pull those in more easily from, from Hadoop sources or from, from uh, other database sources around the organization. And that would allow an, an, a degree of automation about that being kept up, uh, up to date. And that essentially is going to allow uh, some automation of uh, what the data scientists are doing uh, and, and make it much more production friendly. Um, in terms of uh, unique capabilities in the industry. There are, uh, there are other ways of going of, of combining these databases around there. Um, Quest, for example, have uh, a, a product called Toad, which is uh, an open source product that's very, very uh, truly open source product that's uh, very popular uh, in the development industry. So there are other approaches around, but but uh, allowing automation and uh, automatic updating of, uh, of data in a production setting is, uh, is a good thing and uh, will allow, uh, allow uh, more robust uh, implementations of this as a large centralized database. Um, and, and for people who want to take that approach, uh, and obviously it's a cheaper approach than taking a large Oracle centralized database, um, then uh, there, there's some attractions. So it seems like there's always a trade-off here with open, right? So you've got the, the totally open, open source, free, anybody can contribute, and there's some kind of you know, body mm -hmm. that adjudicates what gets delivered, and it's sort of quirky. There's obviously risks involved. It's somewhat slow, it's a lot slower, yes, actually. It can be very time consuming. Um, versus the single vendor controlled, like an Android, I, I would put, Java in that category where you've got uh, uh, an overall authority of uh, the platforms open, the, the API is open, the exits and the entries into the platform are well understood. Um, it's, it's about growing an ecosystem, but the core platform is controlled by a single vendor. And then you've got a, you know, the, the other end of the spectrum, which is a proprietary, you know, which still had, could have sets of APIs, but it's not considered right. open source uh, in the sense that we're talking about here. Um, so what are from a customer standpoint, you know, when should you go with which model? Well, is, is that a question for me? So, sure. uh, I, I, my, my uh, input would be that this is much closer to the last model that you mentioned. It's uh, it's an open a, 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 an API which is essentially free to use, um, but you have to obviously take the core software uh, from from EMC, and you have to take the Green Plum database, etc. So it's an ability to use the API and build applications on top of that particular platform. So for, for, uh, for, for ISVs, that's of, of some value. Um, it, it's possible that uh, end users themselves uh, would like to use that, those APIs. But in terms of the traditional uh, open uh, definition, I think this is of, uh, it, it, it's pretty close to a closed system and, and should be regarded as such by end users. That doesn't mean to say it's bad at all. I mean, the, the Green Plum is an excellent uh, database and, uh, 
the uh, I'm uh, obviously time will tell about the chorus, etc., and 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 how effective it is compared with other products. Um, but uh, given that those are good products, then um, then there's uh, there's a good strong uh, reason for taking this approach. Didn't EMC Green Plum announce that that as part of the announcement that it would uh, enable other databases besides the Green Plum database, or am I mistaken about that? They, they have the ability to pull in into the Green Plum database other databases or pieces from other databases, keep track of that. So it, it's a way of creating a, a bigger database from multiple sources, uh, including Hadoop, uh, as part of the um, as part of the, 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 the data science project part of this, if you like, the automation of that. Is that it? I thought there was a, more of an indication that they would over time open it up to Right. Well, I mean, they, you know, they said on the one hand they're absolutely committed to um, enabling integration with other databases. On the other hand, they didn't say exactly when or, or how, how far along they are in that okay. process. So for now, we're starting here. It's, it's, it's really targeted at the existing base of yeah, customers. Absolutely. Um, and then over time, we'll see. Okay. Why does all this matter? Jeff. Uh, well, for a few reasons. Um, I mean, really the last mile of big data is the applications. So any platform or service that makes it easier to build applications and to do the analytics that feed those applications, to build the models that feed applications, uh, is, is a good thing. So in that sense, uh, this is important. I think data scientists uh, working with this platform are going to uh, embrace Chorus, at least initially. I mean, as David said, time will tell how, how effective it truly is. But EMC is definitely on the right track in terms of making it collaborative, uh, allowing uh, data scientists to use whatever tools they want. For instance, you, EMC is not, uh, has not created or is not embedding an existing particular existing analytic technology or tool into the platform. You can bring SAS Data Miner into it if you want, or um, I believe they also mentioned Alpine uh, Data Labs uh, that they're working with. Um, so the idea that you can bring in the, the tool you're most comfortable with, I think, was also very important for them to, uh, to take that approach. Um, but I, yeah, I think if you combine, when you combine the social with the analytic um, capabilities, it's, it's uh, at least from a uh, messaging or from a, a vision standpoint, uh, I think they're, they're going down the right track. So you so said the last miles applications. Applications are hard to build on top of Hadoop. We know that. Yeah. Um, so, and you have predicted that this is the year when there's going to we're going to see a lot of application uh, activity. Mm -hmm. uh, is this an example? <coughs> I mean, are we on track for that prediction? Yeah, I think I think well, I think what's going to what needs to happen is more platforms that enable the building of applications has to occur before we actually see a plethora of new applications emerge. So this is a definitely a, a move in the, in the right direction there. But it is difficult to um, to write these applications in parallel environments such as Hadoop. So any any kind of, we're looking, f we're hoping to see more platforms like this that essentially abstract away some of that complexity um, in terms of uh, integrating Hadoop and other data sources into your uh, application development processes. So what about Pivotal Labs? I mean, I know they're a big Ruby on Rails shop. They hopped on that trend. My mm -hmm. guess is they're going to hop on, you know, uh, Node.js and any yep. any hot emerging language. You know, a, a company like Pivotal Labs is going to be there. Um, very, you know, f early edge, leading edge development company. What does that mean? What does that acquisition mean for, for customers in the industry? Uh, well, again, it's 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 critical to. I mean, th if you think about a, a cu an EMC customer that's invested in UAP, and they've uh, so they've they've spent some money on Greenplum, they've got a Hadoop uh, infrastructure that they're now supporting. Uh, now they've got Chorus, where their data scientists can be more productive. But what's next? You you need to make that uh, data available, that an analy analytics available to the application so business users can actually uh, make decisions with it or perhaps you could automate business processes. So I think this is, this is key. This really gives um, EMC the full, the full stack really from the, uh, the storage up through, storage and processing up through the analytics to building the application layer. All right, David, anything you'd add to uh, why does it matter? Um, yes, I, I, I think uh, Jeff has uh, summed it up very well. Um, it, it, this is from uh, Greenplum's point of view and, and the, and the uh, ability of Greenplum to compete in the uh, marketplace. This is uh, a, an important capability, um, the ability to orchestrate all of the data sources and ma manage those uh, effectively and make it into a production workflow is, is critical. Um, uh, because the applications built on top of that have to be able to rely 
on the quality of the data, ensure that it's the right versions, etc. Um, and 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 that this. The, the idea of this, obviously, is to make it a lot simpler and a lot more automated to actually do that uh, uh, that, that operational those operational processes. Um, it, so it's it's a prerequisite for uh, being in this marketplace. Uh, obviously, the quality of it um, and you know how easy it is to implement. Time will tell, but it's a prerequisite really to to be effective in in operational. Um, uh, but uh, it, it doesn't. It doesn't add, in essence, anything dramatically new in terms of capability. It's uh, it's stuff that could be done, but would have to be done manually. This is uh, EMC at its best, which is put, putting in the the uh, the framework and the automation around it. All right, Jeff Kelly, we'll give you the final word. Closing thoughts. Well, like I said, it's uh, big data. Application is kind of the last mile here. You need to you need to build applications ultimately to derive uh, real value. <clears throat> excuse me from big data. So uh, I think it's a, certainly a, a, a welcome um, move. I think uh, we're, we're hoping to see more more vendors kind of embrace this kind of social um, collaboration type uh, model for data analytics and data science. Um, of course, as David said, time will tell if this particular product um, kind of meets all the expectations. But I think this is a good sign that we're moving in the right direction. Okay, so data science, collaboration, openness, um, applications uh, really are the key. Guys, thanks very much for helping us break down this announcement, and uh, you guys have a great day. Thanks for watching, everybody, and we'll see you next time.